I don't even know how to intro this. This is, this is just amazing. Okay, let's go. Using GPT-4 to help you with DAX is, I think, you know, transfer, it's going to be transformational. It's, it's just really powerful as an assistant. It does not replace your need to learn DAX. Okay, you still need to understand it. It'll get it wrong. You'll probably see now when I try this out. I've had mixed results, but I've found that the prompt that I'm about to use really helps. It's nowhere near perfect, but it's still, the results are, are pretty stunning, okay? So check this out. I'm just going to paste a prompt in here and just load it. And this is the key to getting good results, whatever you're doing in, in with ChatGPT. This is the prompt I've written, and it's available in the YouTube description. There's a link to the, this prompt, and this will just evolve, okay? I'll, I keep tweaking this every single time I use it, um, and I'm not an expert in this stuff, so I'm just assuming that some of these things help, but apparently telling GPT it's an expert in a certain area helps, and that seems to be right, okay? Give it a roll. I have no idea if these trusted sources help the prompt or not, I'll have to test it without, with and without, but, you know, I've told it it's got a star schema, I've told it I've got a calendar table, I've told it I have fact tables and dimensions, and that this is how I'd like my code laid out. Give it examples, okay, of how you want your code to be um, presented. I've given it various other bits of information, I've told it I'd like uh, a little description, and I've given it an example, again, which helps. All right, and it's ready. It says, okay, I can help you. So let's try out a particularly tricky one, okay? And honestly, make sure you're using GPT-4. 3.5 is just, it's, it's not good, okay? 3.5 is just not good. So four, you have to pay 20 bucks a month, but it's, it's pretty impressive. So let's go and have a look at a, a report here. I'm going to throw a couple of examples at it. So here's an events in progress challenge, which is quite a tricky DAX formula to work out how many rooms were occupied each day when you have an arrival date and a departure date, okay, because some of the dates overlap. So let's click this one, 3rd to the 10th, and then I click on this one, the 4th to the 7th, okay. So you can see how it sort of, this formula is actually allowing me to see the cumulative total with check-in and check-outs. It's quite a gnarly little formula. So let's see if we can get GPT-4 to help us write it. Um, so I've got a reservations table with an arrival date and a departure date. Okay, so I'm just gonna type the, my, my question in here and I'll just speed it up so that you're not sitting there watching me do it. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Fact table is called reservations. Each row is a room booking. Okay, will it make sense of that? You know, it has two columns, an arrival date and a departure date. The arrival date is linked to my calendar table using the date column. And I want to create a measure that will show the number of rooms occupied each day if I present this. All right, let's see what it does. Does it get remotely close? Okay. And it gives you a bit of an explanation. Right, that is not remotely right. And I, you know, I could edit this out of the video, but this is completely different to every result I've had when I've tested this out before. And I guess this is the risk with GPT, chat GPT, okay, is that it can give you some really weird stuff. Okay, count rows of the reservations expanded. Mm, I do not like that. Not like that solution. Is there a single formula that can use my date table and the arrival? and departure dates.
Okay, here we go. This is a bit more like it. All right, so it's given me my bit of documentation here. It's given, it's grabbing my current date per the visual, and it's actually given a little note, get the current date in the filter context. Cool. It's given me underscore result, return result, calculate count rows, filter reservations. Okay, this is looking nice. So copy that. And again, how do you know it's looking nice? Well, you need to know DAX, all right? This is the thing you need to, it's not a substitute for knowing this stuff, but it can help you when you're getting hitting more complicated scenarios. So I'm just gonna go in here, and there was one I tried earlier, I'm just gonna paste this one in and press enter. Any errors? No, okay. Right, let's have a look. I'm gonna copy this chart and paste it. Okay, just to see if I can get the same answer because this is the one I worked out earlier. And I'm gonna swap out this and tick this. Ah. And herein lies the problem, okay? It's not really aware of the fact it's gotta break out of the filter context for the particular date. So it's actually trapping you inside. It's not, it's not gonna remove all in there somewhere. So let's go back in. It's pretty cool that it tells you if your names, of, if your column names are different, it needs to, you need to change them. Okay, um, the formula is not quite right. Um, and this is the challenge. How do you word what the, what the prompt is to, to get it to fix it? Um, Date is filtering the results. Is that a sensible thing to say? I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay. Change the filter context. We need to use the all function to remove the filter before applying our own filter. Okay. All right. Let's give this a go. Copy out of that, come in here, go into my measure, paste it in, press enter. All right, let's have a look. 15, 14, 14, 12. All right, so it's written that formula for us and it's documented it. It's no, you know, you would be stumped if you didn't know what the issue was and you didn't word that second question correctly it won't help you but but if you know enough dax it's like power query you know there's buttons to get you so far and then you can tweak it so this can give you a starting point okay and it may get it right all right let's check out let's do one more okay let's do one more just to just to see if this can can help us so i've got another scenario here okay i've got sales by date and i want to work out this one this a formula to give me this formula, this number here, the date of the peak sales, okay, date of max sales. The challenge is, okay, that um, my data, if I bring it up here, okay, and I go to my sales table, my sales table is actually not at a sort of single date level, it's at a product code, store code, and I don't have a sales column, I've got quantity sold and product price. All right. So let's see if it can actually work this out. So this is called sales table. And I want to work out total sales amount. Okay. So I'm going to go back in. Um, I have a new question. Again, I'll type in the prompt and I'll zoom through it. Well, that, let's, let's just see what happens. Okay, let's just see what happens. Okay.
Okay, so it's created the base measure first, so sales equals the sum x of the sales table, quantity sold column times product price, cool, okay. And then it's doing, to find out this, this is looking promising, it's doing add columns, so it's iterating down the calendar date table, because to get the maximum sales of, by date, you can't use the fact table, because that's by store and by code, so it's actually creating a temporary little column called sales, and then it's giving me the max sales and a little explanation of the bottom here. All right, let's try this out. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code, go into my uh, report here. Okay, let's go in here and we'll put this one in first. Sales. All right, I think I may already have a formula called sales, so it might block me. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to call this one uh, GPT sales. All right. And then I'm going to go back in here and get the second formula. Copy that one. Go back into my report. Right click new measure. And I'll just need to change this to uh, GPT sales. Is there another one here? Sales by date. That at sales is using my temporary column. All right, let's see if that, let's see how that goes. Okay. So let's use the new fancy card visual. Here we go. And if I tick my max sales date, 30th of September, 2018. All right, <laughs> pretty cool. It works. Um, so there we go, it, it's, it's an interesting one, okay? It's gonna develop, uh, we'll get better at prompting. I'm pretty impressed. Sometimes it gives you really annoying stuff. It's not a replacement for your learning DAX though, okay? but it may help you understand some code. You know, we can come in here and we could say, we could grab this one or, okay. Sometimes it actually tells you in here, but you could say, could you explain the VAR sales by date part? You know, this is where some of this stuff is just. This is just cool. All right. This is just really good. Okay. Long video. Hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think. Play about with it. Honestly, this is like, if we can all start feeding back to each other, letting each other know what works, what doesn't, sharing these prompts, we all get better. Okay, catch you in the next video.